And we're back with another episode of Streetpreneur Podcast, the podcast for entrepreneurs, small business owners, startup company, and aspiring entrepreneurs. And today we have a great show for you today. Um, we have a special guest. She's a innovator. <laughs> She's um, definitely making a name for herself and also aspiring women um, all across America to start their own businesses. So I look at her as being an innovator. And uh, some of her accomplishments, I want to talk about them. Uh, of course, she deserves it, all the praise in the world. She's a computer science major. She's the founder and CEO of Her Ride. She's a professional athlete in her past time. Um, you might have seen her on television interviews here in the local Atlanta area, and I'm sure outside of the Atlanta region. Um, she's also a semifinalist of the 2024 um, Black Ambition Prize Competition. She's also an honoree of the Black Wall Street Honors Awards. And she's also a recipient of the 2024 Empower Her Grant Award. And I want to welcome to the show Mrs. Jillian Anderson, the CEO of Her Ride. Thank you. How you doing today? I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. I didn't realize that. Wow. I've done a lot. <laughs> yeah, we do our homework. I do my research. Thank you. You know, try to do my best uh, to make sure um, our entrepreneurs receive the accolades they deserve. So just tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to start um, in creating your company. First of all, just tell us about your background. Okay. Um, so my background is in computer science. That's what I went to school for. Okay. Shout out to Albany State University in Albany, Georgia. That's why I got my degree. All right. Um, I actually played three sports while I was in college. I came in on a track scholarship. Um, I walked onto the volleyball team. And then I went and... After the volleyball team, I played on the volleyball team for four years. And if you go D2 um, in any sport, you get five semesters of uh, five years or 10 semesters of eligibility. And so I was in school for an extra year and I actually uh, walked onto the ball basketball team and okay. uh, played basketball. So I played three sports in school. Okay. Um, background is I'm from Athens, Georgia. So I went to Clark Central High School, graduated in 2010. Uh, went to Albany State, got my degree. Um, after I got my degree, I was actually recruited or scouted by the Harlem Globetrotters. Um, I had a really crazy vertical yeah. uh, jump in, in college. So they wanted me to be the first female dunker on the team. Yeah. Uh, tried out for the Harlem Globetrotters, didn't make the team. Um, came back came back to Athens, moved to Atlanta because I couldn't find much work in um, Athens based on my degree yeah. and um, started driving ride share. So that's that's how I got uh, into getting uh, into uh, building her ride was yeah. I started driving ride share. Oh, OK, OK. And um, just tell us about, I know you, like you said, you drove for Uber, you drove for mm -hmm. Lyft, and um, you heard the complaints of some of the female customers that were there. Mm -hmm. um, is that the motivating factor or you just, when did you first saw the need that this was going to be a problem and it's something that needed to be implemented that they didn't recognize or didn't put into their platform? at that particular time? It's probably around 2018, 2019. This one lady that I took home one time, her story really hit me, like it really hit me hard. Um, she she was a, you know, she um, worked at, at the club, picked her up, was taking her home. She doesn't live in the city. She lives outside of the city. So as we're getting closer to her house, mm -hmm. I pull in the subdivision and all, like she's quiet the entire ride. Pull in the subdivision, all of a sudden she starts navigating me to get to her house. And I'm like, GPS is on. Like I... You know, I didn't know I needed help, but she um she was explaining. She was like, "Yeah, I put the wrong address on purpose because, basically, the last time I um the last she said one of she had an issue where she was dropped off by an Uber. I don't know if it was Uber or Lyft driver, and that driver actually came back to her actual house the next day. Oh, I thought that was insane. Yeah, so scary. I was like, "Yeah, this is yeah. a problem that needs to be fixed asap." And um, I'm actually big on podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and uh, how I built this is one of the ones I was listening to at the time. Right. And they had the founders of Lyft on there, and um, one of the founders has a very similar background to mine. And when I realized it was only two people that started Lyft, I was like. Wait, it can't be that hard to start a ride share yeah. company. So I just started doing my research and kind of, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Kind of put it together. And, yeah. Um, was it hard putting the app together or finding a company to do the app? Not very hard at all. To develop the app? No, not very hard at all. It's as simple as a Google right. search. Um, because I do have a computer, computer science, science background and I am yeah. pretty tech savvy, I was right. able to filter out, you know, who's the real versus who's the fake. Right. And I was able to find a reputable uh, company to complete my project for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's kind of touch on raising funds for the company. Oh, yeah. 
Um, was that your personal money or did you seek out uh, business loans or? So for the first iteration of the app, um, I built, uh, I paid for it myself. It okay. was around, it was okay. around $7,000. It was $7,000 to build my app. Yeah. That was back in 20, 2018 going into 20, no, 2019 going into 2020. So that's not the same price now. Yeah. Um, but um, I blew, I, you know, not blew my savings, but I used all of my yeah. savings on it. Um, and then we had been bootstrapped all up until 2022 is when we did our first family and friends round. Okay. And so I decided to do that because by that time we had been on the news. We had been, you know, our been business had been validated. Yeah. yeah. So okay. there were more people that were actually interested in investing. And so okay. we've raised about... We did 88,000 in a family and friends round. I did two separate family and friends rounds. And then I also have won about $40,000 in grants. Okay. So grants and family and friends round. Okay. Good. And then we just got the loan from the city of Atlanta. Yeah, we're going to talk about that okay. too. <laughs> um, so after the app was created, let's kind of break it down step by step. Yes. So after the app was created... And what was the next step? So it was, the next step was releasing the app. We released okay. the app in March of 2020, and everybody remembers what happened then. Yeah. So the city shut down, the world shut down. Yes. And so we weren't giving any rides at the time, but it was available to download on the app store. So mm -hmm. what I decided to do was focus on social media marketing and just marketing in general and building the community. And so um, I'm big on Twitter. Um, not big in terms of like my followers or nothing like that, but I've been using these platforms since probably like 2009. Mm -hmm. I'm very savvy at it. I understand how it works. And so um, during that time, COVID, it was so many people on social media platforms. I just started following the trends and yeah. applying them to her ride. We went viral in t June 2020 and 7,000 people signed up in one day. And that's why I knew I had something. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And how yeah. long did it take you to hire your first drivers? Um, did you... you you posted on social media for mm -hmm. drivers and then they contacted you and yep um and i actually put out an indeed um applicate like a okay. made an indeed job mm -hmm. posting and that was mm -hmm. actually i did it before the app was finished over 500 people applied oh yeah so i knew the interest was there yeah we didn't yeah. hire our first driver uh, i think it was Sometime during 2020, I think I hired my first driver, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't start giving rides until that next year. I was the first driver to give a ride on her, on the her ride okay. platform. Yeah. Okay. And what year was that? Uh, 2021. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Good. <laughs> and um, I want to touch on safety, mm -hmm. um, drivers and safety prevention. Um, as far as your drivers, is um, what are some of the safety measures that you have or policy that you have implemented for their safety if they get just some crazy person in the so, car with them. I know safety is always important. So we have town hall meetings every two weeks where okay. we just discuss and go over mm -hmm. how to use the platform, how to stay safe on the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and that is open for all the, the drivers have the same. They have the same Zoom address so they know they can just log in every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but we talk about those things every two weeks just to make right. sure that the drivers understand, like, this is how you mm -hmm. want to use the platform. This is what to be aware of. Right. Um, if, a, if, if, you, if you happen to accept a trip and the customer has mm -hmm. a face mask on. Don't take them. Just right. cancel the ride. Like certain things like that. Um, right. Trying to help them to be a little bit more self-aware of their surroundings. Um, we give our drivers full control over right. canceling any trip. So we don't penalize them if they cancel a trip. Okay. Um, if they yeah. don't feel safe, if they don't feel comfortable, comfortable. they can cancel and right. it's no penalty to them. Okay. So, yep. Um, tell us some of the early challenges that you faced as far as um, mm. maybe operating procedure. You want to tell us all of them, just a couple that you had to overcome and deal with. Um, I think kind um, of was a headache. <laughs> one is just dealing with like dealing with the opinions of men. That would be the first challenge. So like when we went viral, a lot of people. Well, thought, men would even worry about it. <laughs> I, you're a real man, right. but I, I don't. Um, so like there were a lot of guys that thought that what we were doing is sexist no and right. what we were doing wasn't fair and all this other stuff. And then after yeah. that, our next challenge that we had to get over in terms of operations was getting approved by the airport. Okay, that took a year. Okay. That was insane. I didn't realize it was going to take that long. Um, we actually had, I had to hire a developer to help me because when you apply for the airport, um, you have to get certified by ABT and that's okay. like a federal entity right. or whatever. They are the ones that, mm -hmm. they're the ones that oversee all of the ride share companies that are operating at the airport because you need to be able to sync your, you need to be able to sync your code to their API system so that okay. they can actually see yeah. 
what drivers are on the airport's property. Okay. So that that was a year long process. Um, that's just due to the fact they only have like one person were, working that position. Were there any licenses or fees associated with it, or you had to pay an annual fee, or so that's all to the airport. Okay. Um, so we have to pay our permit fee, and that's only twenty five dollars. Yeah. But we have to pay fifty dollars per driver. Oh, okay. So per driver, um, we um, we have to pay fifty dollars for their permit, and then um, the minimum amount of drivers that you can submit for a ride share or a TNC permit is mm. twenty. Yes, it's twenty. So you have to have a minimum of twenty drivers to submit to even be qualified as a ride share company. Okay. On the airport, um, let's kind of touch on competition. Yeah. Um, do you? How would you feel, or do you even think about it? Sometimes if Uber and Lyft came up with the same concept for female. They already did it. For a female rash. Have they already done it? Yeah. Lyft did it. Yeah. Um, they announced their version the day before the airport dropped our press release. I haven't seen and that I much can... advertisement on it. Yeah, because you're not a you're not a woman. Oh, okay. But the girls, they already <laughs> know because they know that you're not a woman based on your phone. Right. So they're not right. going to send you the advertisements. But uh -huh. the girls been sending it to me. A lot of my friends and stuff, they like like right. that. Um, but Women Plus Connect is the feature. That's what it's called. Right. Um, Uber is about to start theirs. Um, they've already been running a women only option out in different countries. Right. But um, I received somebody sent me like um, a survey that they're sending out to see if people are interested in it. Okay. And that's I know that's due to us. Yeah. Um, there are other companies that have started after us and I mean, they literally have the same business model as us. So, I mean, the influence is there, but yeah. I always say that, uh, we have the best name and, uh, we have the best founder. I'm probably one of the most determined yeah. people you've ever oh, met. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. So, you know, I, I, I welcome all healthy competition. Yeah, competition don't matter. <laughs> yeah. You had let you had that drive yeah. and that motivation regardless. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, tell us, uh, you already touched on some of the negative, how you handle negative press. Yeah. Um, I know like you basically already explained you don't let that overcome you. You don't worry try not to read it. the reviews. Yeah, <laughs> try to read the reviews and stuff like that and just continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. But um, I know some of those reviews maybe have some good information you can they share do. or uh, tips uh, that, that you could utilize with your drivers or just something that you can implement behind the scenes in the company. Yeah, all bad reviews. Right. I, I I definitely take them and look at them and um, mm -hmm. to heart. Um, and it's and mo most of our bad reviews just come to the come they they come because of the way that our app op operates. We're right. not we're not as smooth as Uber and Lyft is yet. Um, and we plan on getting there. Still we're actually working out. Yeah, we're yeah. just working out the kinks. Um, right. we're actually about to do a whole new version or iteration of the app that'll come out in I want to say two and a half months. Okay. Um, and that's going to be way cleaner, way smoother. Right. It's updated. The code is updated. Um, the processes and everything like that is mm -hmm. just going to be a lot more smoother. And so I take all that stuff into consideration and um, I try to do the best that I can and uh, fix it when I can. Yeah. It's either whether we refund somebody or just give mm -hmm. them a, a, a promo right. code or coupon code. Try mm -hmm. to be as responsive as I can, though. OK. Um, do you consider yourself an innovator in the transportation industry? I would say, yeah, I guess so. Um, I wouldn't, because uh, <laughs> yeah. I've always, I've never really looked at myself as like a creative because to me, right. people that are creative can create something from nothing. Yes. But I've been told over the years that like, that's not the only definition of being creative. And so innovative, creative, I do feel like um, what I've done is I've taken something that's already existed or that already exists and I just made it better. And I just niched it. I niched it down to a market of, um, to a market that is appealing and we've been rolling from there. Okay. Um, just kind of give us five traits um, of a successful female entrepreneur in business that they need to have. Um, this, I would you know, say some motivation. intelligence, number one. Okay. You cannot come in this game and not understand what's going on or being or what's being put placed in front of you. Um, right. I would say you would need to be, um, you would have to have thick skin. I can't think of a, whatever that word is for having thick skin. As a woman, you definitely have to because um, a lot of a lot of men that work in your space, they just probably won't respect you. They probably won't even acknowledge you um, until you do something that is worthy of respect. So having tough skin is important. Um, staying focused in terms of just keeping your blinders on and not getting distracted. Um, that's a quality you need to have. Um, another quality will be um, you need to be able to teach yourself. Um, okay. Being able to n do your own research on your own and not having to depend on other people to look things up for you mm. and or um, do things for you. That is a huge quality you need to have. So that's like self-motivation or independence. That I would say that's what that word is. Okay. And then the last one is um, you need to be you need to be kind of like. In, concerned about your health in terms of like you need to be in shape I always tell people like you don't have to be like an athlete but you need to make sure that you're eating right 
right. um, that you're exercising right because mm-hmm. being an entrepreneur is extremely stressful. And uh, I've watched other people just develop all type of health conditions over mm-hmm. the years just due to the fact that they're not taking care of themselves and they're trying mm-hmm. to run their business or run themselves mm-hmm. into the ground. Okay. So, yeah. And um, where do you see the future of the transportation industry as AI develops mm-hmm. um, with the self-driving vehicles and and mm-hmm. other technology changes in the industry? You think your drivers will be phased out or nah. will you always have drivers or yeah, we're gonna will always you be have able drivers. to <laughs> upgrade the vehicles or what type of um, strategy do you have in place? Oh, it might be too far ahead, but uh, I know you think about it from time to time. You see the articles slowly coming out. So what's your opinion? Um, I think we're about 15, 15 years away from that. You're and it's just away. really still depending away. upon who's in office and Congress and stuff because right. um, I've ridden in a self-driving car before in Vegas. I loved it. Um, but mm-hmm. the you have to, so those cars have to be able to integrate with the li- camera lights. Um, they have to be able to integrate with the um, GPSs. Okay. So there's a lot of different government entities that are going to have mm-hmm. to approve these things. Okay. And it's and it's, it's a state by state case. Okay. And so it's going to take a long time. It's going to take, it's a, gonna long take a very yeah. long time. So the drivers are safe. Everybody yeah, drivers are good right, right now. now. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. And how important is it for um, black business owners to support other black business owners? I think it's super important. Like, I think it's probably the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't give any grace to anybody that's a black business owner. And I hate that. I hate that so much. Like, you think that's because of jealousy or? A hundred percent. I think it's because hate ourselves. That too. I think it's self hate and I think it's jealousy. So Mm -hmm. you'll see somebody Mm -hmm. that starts like a burger business or something like that. And all of a sudden they they blow up and, you know, they're everywhere and they're doing articles. And then all of a sudden a disgruntled employee makes a, you know, makes a social media post because, you know, oh, this person did me wrong. And now it's going viral. And now people are commenting and you'll see. And I've I've watched it. You'll see people literally say Black people say, this is why I don't shop or support black owned businesses. And I'm like, that is the most insane thing to say, because while you're going to Walmart, while you're going to your Wendy's and your McDonald's, those corporations are doing the same exact thing, if not worse. That's true. So um, I think it's extremely important for us to uplift and support black business owners because we're the only we're the only ethnicity that does not keep our money circulating amongst mm. ourselves. That's it true. is a, is an extreme issue. All we do is spin, spin, spin and give other people uh, um, the avenues to build their generational wealth. Mm. And here we are looking crazy. So, yes, I think supporting black businesses is extremely important. Mm. Um, we can we can give them reviews and give them comments without trying to tear them down. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think that, yeah, I have, I feel super strongly about that. Not just yeah. because I'm a black business owner, right. um, but because, um, I went to HBCU, like I'm, I'm just a supporter of all everything oh, black. black. And so I just feel like that's how we need to keep it. I don't understand why everybody's so separated, but yeah. Yeah. And, um, where do you see your company in the next five years as far as growth and development and what new projects are you working on? I know you got some stuff <laughs> in mind, um, maybe <laughs> yeah. for next year, I'm gonna say 2025, um, so growth and development sure. for yes. five years. I see us in like probably like five other major cities in five years, maybe 10, uh, hopefully 10. Um, okay. That's my goal is to get it in it's 10 major cities in five years. Right, um, right now um, for next year, my goal is to take over about 30 percent of the airport revenue in terms of ride share. So that's my goal with this right. new app iteration that we're going to have. I plan on marketing and pushing so that we can get 30 percent of the revenue that's coming out of the airport. Right. Just kind of give us a breakdown. I know you mentioned earlier about the airport mm-hmm. and you just tell us about what happened. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you talking brief, about uh, yeah. uh, how, how hard it was to get in it? No, no, no. We touched on that. Oh. I know you touched on when you came in, you said the airport finally approved. Oh, the yeah. um, oh, it was uh, inst- it was uh, Invest Atlanta. They finally gave yeah. me my money. Yeah, just so kind of <laughs> kind of give us a breakdown of what you know what that was about. So we were we are yeah. the recipients of the startup growth loan. Um, Invest Atlanta is off. They have a startup growth loan program for people that have tech companies. Okay. Um, and if you have a a tech company that is operating and it is thriving, mm-hmm. um, they'll give you up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in order to um in order to buy t- to do technology upgrades to buy equipment and as well as uh, working capital to use as working capital okay okay yeah. that's great congratulations thank on you. that thank you very much yeah is there anything else you want to um speak to my audience about which is mostly entrepreneurs and business owners aspiring business owners any tips any yeah. advice you can leave with them don't be scared of paperwork. Everybody likes to try to start their business before they've started their paperwork. Yeah. Start your paperwork first. Um, I actually 
uh, trademarked her ride before I even found a company to um, develop it because I knew that the name was that good. Um, if you really, really believe in something, make sure you own that name and make sure you do your paperwork. So if you're someone who's starting a business in the city and you need your LLC and all this other stuff, get your business license before you start your business. Like, do not try to skip those type those steps because it's going to be detrimental for you in terms of trying to receive funding. Um, trying to apply for funding. These are all the different things that you need. You need to have your financial documents in order. Go buy the QuickBooks account. It's $30 a month. Sign up for it. Make sure that you are keeping track of how your money's coming in and out. Um, you don't need, everybody doesn't need a CPA, but you can go find a bookkeeper. Those yes. are cheaper than CPAs. Bookkeepers can keep track of your books for you. And you don't even have to hire them. You don't even need a book bookkeeper every month. You could probably do once a quarter. Sometimes I, I used to do once a year. I will wait to the end of the year, get my bookkeeper, and let them clean my books up for every from all the from um, from January all the way to mm -hmm. December, and they got me together. And file your taxes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> receiving funding is really critical on that, and that's why I tell people like you have to have your your uh, paperwork together because you're not gonna be able to receive no money. I mean, you're not gonna be able to receive any funding outside of grants. Mm -hmm. And even then, if you don't have your LLC, corporate, all that stuff together, you can't get no grant because how they gonna pay you out? Yes, yeah, sure. So right. do your paperwork and file your taxes. All right. And thank you for being a guest and coming on Streetpreneur Podcast today. Thank you, thank you so much for having um, me. Please leave them your contact information. Also tell uh, any female drivers that want to work for the company how they can get in contact with you. Yes. And um, sign up. So you guys can sign up on HerRide.com. It's H-E-R-I-D-E.com. There's only one R in HerRide. Um, so you'll be able to sign up there. Everything, it'll lead you there. Um, and then if you guys want to contact me on social media, my Instagram is... Mm, what is my Instagram? Oh, the real Jill Gates. Um, that's my Instagram. So it's like Bill Gates, but Jill. And then my Twitter is Jill B Gates. And so I'm active on both of those platforms. So you actually can DM me directly. I'm more than likely I'm going to reply. Okay. And thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you. And I hope I'm sure this, sure this interview inspired um, a lot of female entrepreneurs and other entrepreneurs to um, um, to definitely look into your business and you. definitely take rides and and do business. So yes, download the app. Yeah, down, <laughs> yeah, make sure you download the app. Yes, indeed. And uh, I want to thank all our viewers for watching this particular episode today. She's the first rad share entrepreneur that I've had on the show, and uh, definitely a blessing to me. And I hope she was a blessing to you. And look forward. Please subscribe to the channel and make sure to tune in next week where we're going to have another. Um, innovative entrepreneur coming forward and I want to thank you for coming out. <laughs>